I entitled this The Dark Secret Life After Abortion. This is my story. Uh, coming to grip with the deeper issues, um, that dark secret. I uh, boldly and confidently share this story with you um, in hopes of helping a lot of women and men who have been through the abortion experience. Um, picture me, picture me 40 years ago. I'm in my 20s and I'm unmarried and I'm also pregnant. I just started a career in teaching and I've got my whole life ahead of me. And I'm also scared to death. What am I scared of? I am pregnant. I'm unmarried. Um, my mind is bombarded with all these thoughts. And I never stopped to consider, I never stopped to think, um, is this the truth, what I'm believing? or not. By now I'm consumed with what I think are my own thoughts. And my thoughts are running very wild and uh, all of them are negative. But I don't realize that. That's not on my mind at the moment. My, my, what's on my mind at the moment is at the age of 20, I'm unmarried, I'm pregnant, and I have no idea how I'm going to solve this problem. What will people think of me? How on earth could I care for a child? I've just started a career. I'm not married. I can't have a baby right now. Surely if, if the father had loved me, wouldn't he have asked me to marry him already? Fearful of my parents, um, anger and rejection. I just simply can't face the truth. Fearful of my mother's rejection. I can't face the truth. Fearful of shaming my community. I can't face the truth. Fear of being with someone for the rest of my life and they eventually reject me. I can't face the truth. Fearful of failure. Oh, that was a biggie. Um, I can't face the truth. Fearful of others rejecting me. And also the fear that everyone would find out that I was having sex before marriage. I can't face the truth. Bombarded with all these negative thoughts, I only think about the fearful thoughts and the negative thinking. I'll bring so much shame upon upon the father. A respected teacher in the community? Oh, I can't think, even imagine, shaming my family and community. It'll bring so much shame upon myself. I can't face that uncertainty of the future. I just can't face that failure. I can't face the possibility of rejection. And I certainly can't face the truth. By now, you're screaming into the video. Just tell us what is the truth. Be patient. I'm getting there. I decide to abort my child because I couldn't face the truth. The truth is that I've been having sex outside marriage, as I said. So to cover up the sin of sex outside of marriage, well, I sin, I abort a baby. The sin of abortion. But wait, just wait. There's good news coming. Just listen to my thought processes for another minute or two, and we'll get to the good news. Trying to hide the shame, I filled my life with addictive behaviors that I never ever have, they never ever filled that deep longing of intimacy and fulfillment that I was looking for. Secretly, I had the perfect picture of what a family was to be like in my head. You know, 
career, marriage, husband, and then babies. But now what? Not this way. I succumbed, I succumbed to that abortion procedure, thinking I could put the abortion behind me. No problem. I can do this. But I was scared to death. It was all a lie. I tried to talk myself into it. I tried to talk myself into believing it was I was going to be fine. But years later, I would find out that I couldn't do it alone. The abortion clinic told me that it was just a blob. A blob of tissue? Really? Karen, you believe that? I did. The clinic nurse leave, left me with the impression that morally it was okay. And that abortion was to protect my rights. Really, Karen? You believe that? My career in life. But what about the rights of the child? The Supreme Court legalized the procedure. Abortion was legalized. If the law thought it was okay, it must be okay. Really, Karen? You believe that? You listen to the lies. I recall feeling so confused. I recall feeling that confusion of, of indecision. The infusion doesn't come from God. But where did it come from? Full of indecision and confused. I knew I wanted babies, but not this way. The timing was off. I wasn't even married. I had succumbed to the schemes of the enemy. Unknowingly, I'd been listening to the lies for years. Since a child. I couldn't see the truth because the lies and the fear screamed so loudly in my head. It would be years before I could see the truth clearly. I imagined, I managed, I did manage to try and push away the pain, the loss, the shame, the sin. So I thought, I thought I could push it away, but it always lurked. It always was there. God never left me and he never forsake me. He used what the enemy meant for evil to bring good in my life. It took 15 years, it took a long time before I came to a place where I could hear the truth. Trying to handle it all in my own strength. I had to lay down my own pride. I had to lay down my own ego. I had to lay down the lies, the fears, the limiting beliefs. There's so much. But this is my story. And there's a good ending. I didn't think I could be forgiven for, for the unpardonable sin of abortion. And I was hanging on to that. So I continued to carry the heavy weight of sin upon my own shoulders. Jesus, his love, <laughs> was like no others. No, no man could hold a candle to his love. He brought me, he bought me, and he sought me with his redeeming love. <laughs> Jesus appeared to me at the foot of my bed, not saying a word. I didn't hear him say a word, but like you and I would talk to each other with words. It was just a knowing in my spirit. I knew that he was asking me to give him that sin, the abortion sin. He was asking me to surrender, surrender that heavy burden, that weight that I carried like a monkey on my back for 15 years. Immediately, the minute I gave it to him, the weight lifted, it lifted just like a monkey off my back was set free from the weight of sin and abortion. I never considered the rights of my son. It never occurred to me. 
never occurred to me to put my child's needs above my own fears, above my own needs, above my ego and pride. But my child's needs were important. He had a right. He had a right to live. It cost me dearly as well. It cost me 15 years of unnecessary pain. The loss, the loss of regret, the loss of shame, the, the shame. For all the wrong reasons, I could not face the truth. Bound by fear and lies, limiting beliefs about myself and about the situation and the circumstances, I found it impossible to admit my mistake without admis admitting my sin. Yes. I said it, sin. Once I admitted I made a mistake, I knew Jesus came to save the lost. <laughs> and how lost I was. Knowing the truth, I had a responsibility to acknowledge my sin and repent. And repent I did. I acknowledged my sin and repented of it. I admitted the sin. Of abortion. I admitted the sin of having sex before marriage. <laughs> Praise God. The sin was lifted off me like a monkey off my back. <sighs> All that sin was transferred upon Jesus. How awesome was that? Jesus took my sins and upon him at the cross of Calvary. That's why he came. That's why he died for me. It was, it was always there for me. He died over 2,000 years ago, so. And now it was mine. It was mine to receive. The gift. The gift of salvation. Wow. <laughs> what a revelation. Jesus died for me. So that I could be free of sin. He, he bore my sins upon the cross. He bore my weight, the weight of my sin. His forgiveness, his mercy, his grace was all mine, available to, to a sinner like me. He washed me white as snow in the blood of Jesus. Even though the accuser would come later, or not too long later, but right away, the accuser would come to try and pull me back into those deadly thoughts. But he couldn't. He couldn't. The Holy Spirit now lives in me. He saved me, redeemed me. He has a plan. A great plan. <laughs> There's so much more to my story. So, so much more to my story. The abortion recovery. I'm now on a mission, a mission to help others. So I, I end with this by saying there's more to come. Um, more to come to my heart, hearts, the hard stories, the, the, the things that I did. Um, I was hard on myself, really, really hard on myself. It caused me to shrink back and not be the person I am. And not step into my destiny. But now, now with the tools, with the truth, I'm able to step into all that God created me to be. So I look forward to sharing more of my stories with you about the abortive recovery. Abortion recovery is available. And I look forward to sharing that with you. More in the future. Here's Karen signing off from Heart Shift Co Coaching. All right. God bless you.